Hello world, this is Sachin. And in today's video, we're gonna be looking at the basics of translation. So let's get started. In order to be doing uh, translation, we're gonna be looking at this particular thing called sequence to sequence. Um, and essentially what it is, is we take in a RNN sequence and then output it into a, another, a different RNN sequence. So for example, so what we have over here is we have a question answering diagram. So we're not doing this particular example, but this is just for illustration. So it goes, are you free tomorrow? And that's the input encoder, okay, which is one uh, LSTM set in this case. And for the output, you have, yes, what's up? And this is the output one, which is, you need to understand that it's, it's gonna be a different um, RNN, okay? So LSTM, whatever you want to call it. So also notice that you have this, input token called start and then it's going to say yes but the yes um, is going to in, in, in itself going to be an input to the next lstm because keep in mind each rnn lstm whatever it is needs to have a have an input and it's going to spit out the output and then it also it's going to pass on its hidden state to the next thing okay and it really needs an input and that's why we're going to feed in the previous things input uh sorry previous things output as an input Okay, so it goes, yes, what's up, and then end. All right, so let's get started with the actual lesson itself. So unfortunately, I had to use uh, TensorFlow instead of Keras because it was just too much effort to write it in Keras to customize it. Um, so let's, let's move on. Um, one thing, the data that we're gonna be using in, in today's lesson is, is dates. Okay, so dates can be written in different formats. So the Americans have one way of writing it, the British have a different way, and people, people themselves have their own preferences. So let me show you an example of the, the date set, of the data set that we're gonna be using today. Okay, so, uh, so basically the, the first column is your X's, and the second column is your Y. Okay, so you have, in this case, uh, July 7th, right? So you can also write 30 in numbers and then July, and then you can write Tuesday, September. And the Tuesday part really isn't relevant to the translation part, right? Because all we really care about is getting this 1971-09-14. And, and keep in mind, this is a, a text over here. So we have an input text and then we have an output text. Right? So we're expecting the, we're gonna be expecting the LSTM to understand uh, what the input is and then output a sequence. Now, um, let me just go through how we go and process the data because again, we need to make each character into a number, right? So if you've been watching my previous videos, and I really recommend that you do before you uh, get started on, on the, these things, we, we need to convert each character into a number, right? So in this case, uh, what, I've, what I've done over here is, is I've, gone, I've gone and found all the unique characters in X, and then I've created a dictionary called char to num and the same way I do the same thing for, for Y. Okay, so we, we really just have a limited uh, range of characters. Um, if, you, if you're really curious as to how the data was generated, it's, it's from this library called Faker, which, you, which I pip installed up here, uh, all the way up here, and then that's how I generated the data in all these different formats, okay? And I've, and I've generated 50,000 instances, and this is just a sample of all of them. Okay, all right, so uh, we have our X's and Y's. Um, the, the next thing that we do is keep in mind that we, we have to make our input and the output into a particular length, all right? So we need to have a set input length when it comes to X. Um, and the way that we do that is we, we pad it. So I found out that the, the biggest length in, in all these characters was something like this, where, where you put, put in a day as well, Tuesday, which was really not relevant to the output. So in that case, 29 was the biggest length that I found with all these comments, etc. cetera. Um, and given that, what I'm, going to be, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be padding it uh, until the length is 29, okay? So all the input X's have a length of 29. Um, there's ways of getting around it, which I won't go into this particular video, but again, that's basically how you do it. And the output, in this case, it's a fixed length. Uh, so it's always gonna be four, four numbers for the years, two, and then two numbers for the month, and two numbers for the day, 
Okay, but at the same time, I, I, I'm going to put in this go character, and that's really important, and I'll, and I'll talk about it soon. Okay, uh, the batch data function is basically spitting, like taking the entire data set and then spitting out uh, batches, okay, of a particular size. Um, yeah, okay, so this is the TensorFlow graph. Now, let me come back to my diagram before I actually jump into it so you hopefully understand this better. So what's happening over here is we have this uh, 29 length input, input uh, characters, but what we're gonna be doing is the last hidden state and the last uh, hidden memory, we're, we're going to be taking that and then putting that as the initial state into this blue set of um, RNNs. So again, the, the last hidden state and the last hidden cell memory is going to go into this, what this is called thought vector over here, and we're going to put this as the initial uh, state for the initial hidden state and the initial memory state into the, the next LSTM. Okay, so that is, that's all that's pretty much happening, all right? And again, the, the start thing is what I call go, and I need, I do need that because I need a first value, all right? And I can set the first value to be go in this case. Right? Okay, so let's look at our um, actual graph, the TensorFlow graph, all right? So, so this is where all the modeling is happening. And so over here, it's really important that you go tf.interactive session and not tf.session. So whenever you're playing with Jupyter Notebooks, make sure you put interactive, okay? Because you can play around with it. So otherwise weird things happen and uh, yeah, so let's avoid all of that. So the next, so this block over here inputs output targets. Uh, so I'll talk about what the output, what's the difference between the outputs and the targets. But the inputs is just basically what I just said, the input X was, all right? So, so there's no mystery over there. The targets is going to be every all the characters um, of the output except except for the go character, all right? I'll, and and outputs is starting from the go character, and again it's it's to do with why. But again, let's let's come back. To that. It might be a bit more confusing. So this is this is what we what what is an embedding, all right? So uh, so we initialize it to be a random uniform between minus one and one. Um, and we have to go tf.variable, right? So any, anything that, that we're going to be, that's going to be changing is, it goes tf.variable. And notice that all the x's and the y's have tf.placeholder, okay? Because we're going to be feeding in the data over there and it needs a placeholder. Also important notice is how I put in none and then x sequence length, right? So the none, it me basically means I, it can be a variable, variable length. So, but, Usually the first number is the batch size and then whatever it has to be. So the outputs in this case is gonna be batch size by the Y sequence length, but I put that to be variable. And again, I'll, I'll talk about why I put that to be variable and I fix the input length to be, to be fixed. Okay, so I, I talked about embeddings and then you, you need to do an embedding lookup, okay? Because keep in mind, all that embedding is, is just a big uh, lookup table. All right, so there's really nothing, anything special about uh, an embedding. So you look up, look it up from, uh, from all the inputs. So from that 29, 29 length um, of X's, you're gonna be looking up whatever, whatever character that comes in. Um, and then, and then what, what we're gonna be doing is this input embedding, we're gonna be feeding it into our LSTM. Okay, so these are the LSTMs over here. Um, well, I should, I, I should stop calling it LSTM, it's, it's RNN really. So uh, the, basic, the basic unit is going to be a LSTM cell and the sequence, so the input sequence is going to be a dynamic RNN. Okay, so all that dynamic RNN means is that we're going to be unrolling it um, or rather like uh, appending those, uh, those LSTMs into a length of 29. Okay, so that's, yeah, so the inputs, and, and basically it takes care of it. The, we don't need to specify that it's 29 in length because this input, date input embed will take care of that for us, okay? Which is, which is really what's cool about doing dynamic RNN versus a static RNN. Because as soon as it's static, it's gonna be staying fixed to a length of 29, which we don't want when it comes to the output, All right? I, I'll come back to that. So the decoding layer, similar kind of thing, and, 
just notice how I, from the dynamic RN, the last state becomes the input, well, it becomes the initial state of the decoder, right? So over here, I have my encoder. My decoder, I take the last state of the encoder and chuck it in there. So yeah, so um, over here, we don't care about the last state, but we do care about all the outputs. Okay, so come back to the diagram. So come back to the diagram over here. For the input, all, all, I, all I really wanted was, was these two things. But when it comes to the decoder, I really want these arrows pointing up. Okay, so that's what uh, deck outputs is down here. So let's come back. Yeah. Okay, so deck outputs is those arrows pointing up. And then we're gonna we're gonna take that and we're, we're gonna fix it into a fully connected. So if you if you're familiar with keras, this is the same as saying dense. All right. Um, yeah. So those those become your. It's called logits. But the, that's what's going to be fed into my loss function. Okay, so uh, TensorFlow luckily has this uh, sequence sequence loss function that, that's been written. But essentially, all it is is a softmax function that's that's been applied to each of each and every um, sequence, uh, each and each and every element along the sequence. Okay, so that's all it is. And then we have our targets. Uh, don't worry too much about this. Uh, the TFL ones, it's, it's, it's a fairly standard thing. I'm actually surprised that it's even in there. It, sh it, should, it should really be hidden from the, for, from the user. And yeah, so we have our optimizer. Okay, so hopefully you're, you're starting to see some similarities with Keras if, if you used it before. Um, now, if you're really what, trying to understand what the graph looks like, it's, it's really useful to, to look at the shape of each of these tenses. Right, so any, any of the variables that I've mentioned over here, I can go dot get shape and then go as list. Okay, now the last state, keep in mind it's spitting out the hidden state and the cell memory. Okay, so there's two things that's coming out. So you need to specify which one you want, which is zero or one, because it's a tuple that comes out. And then you need to go dot get shape and then as list. And so here I checked out some of the other ones. So date, input, embed. Um, so, so it's a sequence of 29, but if I remember correctly, the embedding, the embedding size I set to, yeah, so I've set to 10 over here. So in TFL variable, yeah, so this embed size, okay. Uh, yeah, this is a lookup table. Okay, uh, and this show graph function is something I, uh, I took from Stack Overflow, right? So I put the uh, reference link up there, but it's, it's, really, it's really cool because you can check out what the graph looks like on your Jupyter Notebook. So let me, let me zoom out over here and uh, show you what it looks like. Okay, if I could zoom out, that'd be good. All right, so you have your, you have your encoder and decoder. I, I wish it had switched the sides around, but anyway, it, it is what it is. Um, so you have your, Embedding the embedding inputs, they you can see that it looks up or whatever it's supposed to be, and uh, depending on what your inputs are, right? So it's a look at how the arrows go, and the coding is over here. You can. The good thing is, if you if you really want to see what your graph looks like, you can expand it, and you can see that there's an RNN going into there. And uh, this one, if it shows it's LSTN, uh, no, it doesn't quite say over here. But anyway. So you can, uh, in the same way, you can look at the decoder, um, and then you have your fully connected state. So this is what the diagram looks like. Okay, all right. So you can play around with that yourself. Um, all right. So now let's start looking at how the training. All right. So in training, uh, I'm split, splitting it um, a, a third to be the test set, the rest of it to be the train set. Um, and keep in mind the the X train is your input sequence. Y train is your output sequence. Okay, so when we're training, uh, so yes, so keep in mind we had to input three things. So we need to put in the inputs, outputs, and the targets. So the inputs should be fairly obvious. Okay, so it's basically the source, this, I call it source batch, and then the target batch. Now, the, so the actual targets is going to be everything but the go symbol, right? So that's what it's going to be. And the outputs, so what, I, what I've called outputs, it's really, the, it's really the inputs into the decoder, um, dec decoding LSTM, okay? So that's why I've said 
everything except for the last character. Okay, so, so again, the, the targets in themselves are everything but the Go character, and then the outputs is everything but the last character. Okay, so let's go back to the diagram quickly. So if you look at over here, so the inputs, so see how this inputs into the decoder, right? So in, in this case, it will be start, and then the next input will be yes, what's up, okay? So everything, uh, everything including, in, including go uh, will, be, uh, will be the inputs uh, into, into the decoding layer, and then the outputs will, will be yes, what's up, and end. So in this case, I didn't use end as, as, a, uh, as a final thing. I probably should have, but um, yeah. So it's basically everything offset by one, right? So the, the, in this case, the characters offset by one is gonna be the, the final targets and the outputs is uh, go and then one character less. Okay, so this is only happening during training, all right? So we're not gonna be using that little trick during testing. So once I've trained this, um, yeah, you can see that the accuracy starts off at fifty-five percent, which is which is actually quite good because keep in mind uh, we're trying to predict. Uh, I think there's twenty something possible characters, right? So it's uh, fifty fifty-five percent is actually really good when when considering the fact that I need from uh, twenty characters, it's getting an accuracy of fifty-five percent. Okay, it's not like flipping a coin and it's getting fifty-five percent. It's needs to this 20 odd classes. So it goes up to 90%. And if I look at the test set, um, in, in the test set, the accuracy is 88%. Okay, so, uh, so that's all nice, but we're not, we're not done yet. What we, what we need to do is given an input, right? So if I say 25th November, 2008, how do I predict it in, in a real scenario? Okay, so to do that, um, so in order to do that, this is what we do. So I, I know what the sequence of Y is, luckily in this case, right? So which is 10 or 11. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna be putting, uh, so we, in this case, I've taken, I think I've taken two things. Uh, so what, I've, I've taken one particular day, right? So the source batch over here is fixed, right? But the decoder input is, is gonna be changing, right? So the, the decoder input, at, at, in the beginning is simply just a uh, chart on y of go right so I think yeah so it's, it's just going to be go in this particular case and then once what we do is we take the pre the prediction to be the maximum value of the logits right so we want the maximum probability value to be my prediction right and then I take that prediction and then I stack it on to my decoder input Right, so 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 get this. So you really need to understand this for loop. What, what's happening on the for loop? So again, I have a fixed input, okay, which is which is basically the date that I want to be converted, and the output starts up starts off as just the go character, and then we start predicting, and whatever we predict, we append it onto our decoder input, and then we loop through it again, right? So up to a length of y sequence length. So once we do that, we get the dates that we want, All right? So in, in so doing that is how I got eighty eight percent accuracy, and this is how it's done the conversion, All right? So it's taken this input, and character by character is generated all of these things, All right? So to just notice it, it really doesn't care how October is written with a capital O or um, if October was written in the middle. The final thought vector understands, so it summarizes what that date is, and then starts outputting the output sequence. Okay, so hopefully that made sense. If you have any questions or comments, uh, please do ask down below. Subscribe. Make sure you subscribe to me on deepschool.io. Start the repository. And uh, thanks for watching.